Yo, BJ Gador with the Daily BJ, and these are my 13 favorite dumbbell exercises to burn fat and build muscle. You'll only need a pair of 10 to 25 pound dumbbells to start. We cover every key movement pattern, and we hit all three planes of motion. We're gonna begin with the press. So the classic press has three basic gripping options. I recommend starting with that hammer grip option, palms facing. It's the most wrist and shoulder friendly, and all we're gonna do from there is get full extension, come down and control, rip shoulders down, abs crunched. I could also flare out a little bit. I don't wanna go fully out like this, but just a slight angle right there. That's gonna get more medial delt, whereas this grip gets more front delt. And I can also do what's called an Arnold press, or rotational press, where I go in that nice rotational pattern to get all three heads of the shoulders. It's also very therapeutic for the shoulder joints as well. That is gonna get more shoulder in general. If I go flat press, I'm gonna get more chest, all right? There still is an anterior shoulder contribution, but that's obviously how we change the body angle to affect which area you're working more. So the more upright you are, more vertical trunk, the more shoulder. The incline option is gonna get more upper chest, flat option, overall chest, more middle chest, and then decline option gets more lower chest. So you've got the basic press. The row is a great way to work the upper, mid, back, rear shoulders, biceps and forearms. I recommend starting with the supported option, take your lower back out of the equation and really laser focus on the areas you're trying to work. So you can go with either a true flat option or a slight incline to get more range of motion. The benefit of going flat is that it actually forces you to not go too far down. You can actually keep more constant tension on those back muscles. And we're just trying to pull the elbows low, make the arms form a 90 degree angle and get a good squeeze at the top, crack it up between those shoulder blades. The Unsupported options, get more lower back recruitment, a little more glute ham. So I get nice here, feet close enough so the dumbbells don't hit the thighs and just pull right through. Another great option is going split stance. So now I get a little more glute ham load onto one leg. It tends to be more lower back friendly. I love that option as well. Don't forget about our one arm options too. The classic bench row really pulling low towards the hip. And then you can even make it kind of a one arm plank where to get some more core engagement and a classic movement that really kind of works the entire upper body. But the row is critical. You wanna make sure you do at least as much rowing as pressing, if not twice as much for shoulder health. The hinge is a great exercise to work the entire backside of your body, and it's a hip dominant lower body exercise. This is how I like to teach it. Have your calves touching a bench or box to kind of make sure you keep that vertical shin positioning, because the only movement here is happening through the hips. You can start palms facing, Toes pointing straight ahead, shoulders down and back, abs crunch, slight rounding of the upper back. And then from there, all you're gonna do is push your hips back as if closing a car door with your butt to form a tabletop position, headline with the spine, do a hyperextend that neck, and then pull right through the hips. I've got a slight bend and the knees maintained throughout. I'm keeping active tension in my rear shoulders the whole time, so my shoulders aren't rounding or rolling forward, and I'm maintaining that all the way through. I can progress it a couple ways. One, I can go for more of a staggered position, which gives me a little more stability and balance without having to worry about, you know, bouncing around or tilting, turning too much while shifting most of the weight to the lead leg, about 80%. You could obviously progress to doing it unsupported if you want, pulling right through. And then some other fun options are either the one arm option on two legs, get a little more core and hip recruitment. You could also do the one arm option on one leg, either staggered or unsupported, holding on the Inside arm is gonna get more recruitment of the lateral hip. Holding on the outside arm is gonna get more recruitment of the inner hip and thigh. But this one is great, it's easy on the knees. It really strengthens the glutes, the hamstrings, the entire backside. People tend to need more of this than squatting, especially in the beginning. Squat is the king of lower body exercises. I like to do it from a front loaded position, keep more of an upright trunk, you get more quad stress, and also more core shoulder engagement while taking stress off the back and knees. You can actually auto correct your form, sit taller and deeper. We can front load two ways, single dumbbell goblet style, which I'll show next, or double dumbbell in the rack position here. So you've got options, whatever's comfortable you choose. But our classic goblet squat, we're gonna pull the weight straight up the body, hold it right here into your chest, elbows tight to the ribs, slight toe flare, and you're gonna squat to about parallel thigh without rounding the back. Around that either slightly below or slightly above, sit tall and deep, spread the hips, come right through. All right, great way to just overload those quad and glute muscles, and it's so accessible. If you find yourself in a situation where that's too 
easy or you don't have enough weights to really challenge yourself with that for lower reps, you can go to a Bulgarian split squat where you elevate that back leg. And now I've got much more load coming through one leg at a time, mobilizing the back hip. It's actually my favorite lower body builder and it also spares the spine and is easy to recover from. So either two-legged or one-legged, you've got great options to access the squat anytime, anywhere with less joint stress. The pullover is an isolated shoulder extension movement to stretch and strengthen the lats and improve shoulder mobility while also getting a little more upper pec as well. So I'm gonna show the single dumbbell option. I'll show you how to do with a single pair of dumbbells as well. If you don't have a dumbbell that you can kind of hold the way I'm about to show. So we put the upper mid back on the edge of the bench. I get locked in here and I'm gonna either fully extend the hips, get more glute engagement or dip it slightly to get more stretch. You've got options, all right? Elbows are bent slight and maintained throughout. And all I'm gonna do from there is slowly lower control, pause, bring it right back. If I dip the hips a little bit, I just feel a little more stretch even while I'm still trying to maintain that abdominal crunch the whole way to not strain my lower back. So you need to be able to have a dumbbell that can look this way so you can assume that Jay-Z Hova position, that kind of triangle pyramid shape. If you don't have a dumbbell that allows you to do it, you can take two dumbbells, which is a little more challenging because you've got greater instability demands because of that more operating in an open chain environment. Lower control, bring it back. I could also put both dumbbells together and create uh, the stability that I would have with a single dumbbell. So you've got options that way. Both are excellent. Kind of one that I'll show you as well for more glute and core engagement is going one leg at a time while maintaining that. So that just becomes almost a whole body movement. Great, work, great way to work the entire backside of the body. I think you'll enjoy it. The raise is the key movement to mobilize the ankles and develop the calves. If you can, do it off an extended range of motion platform like the edge of a bench, low box step, a weight plate. You get more mobility benefits, more range of motion equals more muscle gain. Hold the dumbbell on the same side of leg that you're working. We get right in the balls of the feet there, edged, full range. You want to squeeze the glute, pull the ribs and shoulders down, clench the abs, and lock it in. Make sure we're not swaying at the hips. I come all the way through, squeezing hard at the top. Lower control, get that full stretch. It's a small range of motion movement as it is, so it's really key to control it and get that extended stretch at the bottom where the calves are most active, push through and squeeze. If I wanna get more lower calf, the straight legged option gets more upper calf gastroc. I get more lower calf by bending that knee slightly and then coming up. And now the soleus, that lower calf is a little more active, but the soleus is best worked on a seated calf raise machine anyway, but you still have some options at home, minimal gym setups. Got to do this one, and by doing it on both sides, one leg at a time, you get to strengthen and balance between sides, which are very common when it comes to the calves. Get it. The fly is a classic upper body exercise that is single joint in the transverse plane to develop the shoulder girdle. Many know the chest fly to get the front shoulder and the chest going. We're actually going to prioritize the reverse fly for more upper mid back and rear delt recruitment to improve posture and balance out all the pushing and pressing most people do over the course of their lives. So you wanna get initially in this chest supported position, take the lower back out of the equation, much lighter weights than many people will use. You wanna keep a slight bend in the elbows, but usually a pair of 10s is actually the best place to start. You really never wanna go higher than 25s unless you're super strong. So slight bend in the elbows, palms facing, nice shoulder friendly grip, pull open, squeeze, lower in control. Just try to crack a nut between those shoulder blades. Another great option I like too is to take a bench like that, place your forehead on, and then that way, you can't really cheat or bring too much momentum in. And I come through, squeeze, lower in control. Both options are excellent. If you want to get more lateral side delt, you can go more upright and go with a classic lateral raise. Not really a fly, but kind of the same family of movements. But again, anytime you can get more upper mid-back work and rear delt work, do it. The lunge is an undefeated leg day exercise that will also get inner and outer hip thigh recruitment because you're in a split stance. There's lots of ways to do it. Let me show you my favorites. So I'm gonna start first with a reverse lunge. The reverse lunge tends to be easier on the knees, also gets more glute ham recruitment. I'm gonna step back and control arms, legs form 90 degree angles. If you're holding the dumbbells at the side, keep active versus shoulder position so they're not swinging on you. You keep a good shoulder position. The forward lunge is gonna get more quad recruitment though it does have some more knee stress. So just be aware of that as I step forward. I gotta decelerate with the quads, push back fast. Lower control, push back fast. And again, keeping that active rear delt tension. One of my favorites, because it actually gets both the reverse and forward lunge at the same time, 
more fat loss and metabolic and cardio effect. It's a seesaw lunge. So I step back, come right through that right leg, never leaves the ground as I just continuously move back and forth. Great movement to really destroy fat and build those legs. Now in terms of where to hold a dumbbell one arm at a time for more core and hip recruitment, if I'm doing a lunge while holding on the same side as the lead leg, I get more inner hip thigh and lower quad recruitment. When I'm doing a lunge with the opposite hand holding, I get more lateral hip recruitment. You could also get more lateral hip glutes with the classic lateral lunge. Going like this, smaller range of motion movement. Hips and shoulders stay square ahead. You really want to push the hips back, but it really gets doing that side to side lateral plane, which is great for sports as well. The key lunges to unlock crazy gains for that lower body. The curl is the classic elbow flexion exercise to build your biceps and forearms and strengthen your grip. Reverse curls, take your biceps a bit out of it to get more forearm recruitment, more brachioradialis. And we're gonna keep as overhand of a grip as we can, elbow side to the side, come right through there. The hammer grip tends to be the strongest option, also very easy on the wrists and elbows. It gets more brachialis, that muscle between the biceps and triceps, coming right through here. And then obviously, you know, the classic curl, which is also great for posture, upper mid back, rear shoulder development, keeping all the way open in that supinated position, coming up in control, and then right through. I also love the curl with a twist as an option, or even that alternating curl option. If you wanna get complete bicep development and also bring the shoulders and triceps into it for a total upper body movement, you can do a curl to press and really get it going. Lots of options to build those arms and get ready for the gun show. The extension is a great isolation movement to build the triceps, which actually comprise as much as two thirds or more of your upper arm mass. So if you want big arms, you've got to really focus on the triceps, not just those biceps. So we're going to start with the overhead triceps extension because people tend to skip this one. And it's really critical because it actually works the long head of the triceps, that meaty section right around here that attaches into the scapula. You're also weakest here, so lighter weights go longer way. It mobilizes your upper mid back and lats as well. I love this exercise. Make sure to root yourself down, crunch the abs, rib shoulders down the entire way. Palms facing hammer grip is the best place to start. You can then also mix in that classic position here. Instead of over the shoulders, go more over the face. Keeps the triceps more active and actually takes stress off the elbows. You'll be able to go much heavier here. Great option too. Sometimes I'll start overhead and then go there as kind of a mechanical drop set where this lighter load feels heavy because of the pre-fatigue. And there's also the kickback, which is basically doing a tricep extension from a bent over position. And that's great for really getting your triceps, but also your lats, upper mid back, and rear shoulders. Three key ways to build those triceps and make your presses a lot stronger too. The carry is a classic strongman exercise that works your whole body with a particular emphasis on your grip, your forearms, your shoulders, and your back and traps. So I actually teach this like you would do a sobriety test for the legs, tracing the line, brings your legs closer together too and lets big weights not touch the thighs as you do it. Arms at the side, make sure you never wanna be here, right? So pull the shoulders down and back, keep active rear delts, and then slowly trace the line. This will help improve your gait as well and ultimately running mechanics. If you're in a small space, do a couple steps forward and then a couple steps back. If you find yourself with a weight that's too light, you can go to the front rack position or even harder overhead and now you get crazy core activation and you also will improve your overhead press and blow up the shoulders in a good way. I also love the single arm options because you get more oblique recruitment. It's actually my favorite obliques exercise and you can do that same level change progression, overhead being the hardest and now we get shoulders, obliques, beautiful way to build it up. Another classic option too to also help correct posture is the externally rotated farmer's carry, which again, open up that chest, strengthen the upper mid back. That's always a good thing to do. No list would be complete without some sort of twist or rotation. I'll show one with more of a medium weight and then one with a really light weight. Love both of these options. You get core and also great for athleticism. So the chop is where we're gonna actually bring a dumbbell and hold it just like this, right outside the knee. I'm gonna drop the hips, get a full level change there so I'm not rounding at the back. So I'm actually sinking down, loading myself up like an accordion. It's right outside, chest is up. I'm gonna pivot my feet, rotate my hips, and then explode out like this. The straighter my arms are, the heavier that weight will feel because I lengthen the lever. But notice how I'm not twisting in my low back. I'm pivoting the feet, rotating the hips, 
I load, and then I explode. That's also a crazy metabolic movement that you can really get some acceleration on and a uh, great pattern you want to work. This one is one of my favorites. I threw discus in high school. And you take a five to 10 pound dumbbell max. What you're gonna do is load it up. So pivot the feet, rotate the hips just like you would in discus. And then from there, arms stay straight, rotate through, use it off hands as a stopper. Load, explode, load, explode. And the key on that one is going light enough that you actually can create enough power to make the movement a speed power movement. If it's too heavy, it becomes a grinding movement. It's not what you're gonna get out of the exercise. This is great for fast switch fibers. And again, pivoting feet, rotating hips, really unlocks almost every sport because many people are just so locked in a single plane of motion and they tend to twist too much at the low back. Do it. The swing is an unmatched exercise to burn fat, boost metabolism, build the entire backside of your body. Also train power. I love it over Olympic lifts, especially for newbies because there isn't as much of a learning curve, tends to be safer, lower risk of injury. Instead of doing the swing, which I see many do with a dumbbell like this, do that with a kettlebell. It's actually made for the kettlebell because of the fact that there's a pendulum, it feels more natural. Instead, do what's called a skier swing, which actually auto corrects your form and makes it so you don't squat too much, as many do on the swing. You gotta get your feet close together so the dumbbells don't hit your thighs. That also makes it hard to squat and makes you drive the movement where you want from the hips. So we load triple bends, knees, ankles, hips, like a downhill skier. From there, pull up, exhale through. Hinge. I could also extend the range of motion, go overhead, which increases core engagement, range of motion, calorie burn, but also I get more deceleration on the way down. So these 25s will feel like 50s. You gotta make sure you're ready for it. As I come down, I gotta load up. Awesome exercise. I could also, do it from a staggered position to get more weight onto one leg at a time, which will really light up the glutes and the hams and of course the back. So again, I love this option. It's a great way to really train the key to athleticism, which is triple extension, ankle, knee, hip. It's a safe way to do it and light loads go a long way. Hope you enjoyed this. If you're looking to burn more fat with dumbbells, join the dailybj.com for monthly fat loss programs from yours truly. You can do it home or take to the gym and get a free three-day trial. If you're trying to build more muscle with dumbbells, join my online coaching group and follow my training plan. Exactly what I do at gorillacorngains.com. The workout description is in the video description. Subscribe to my channel. Love you guys. Peace.